Welcome, everybody, to the Stomp Chomp Roar Show. I'm your host, your Pangea Safari Guide, and your prehistoric expert. My name is Dinosaur Ranger Anthony. And for some of you that might be new uh, to my YouTube or Facebook, I own a small business called Stomp Chomp Roar. And what we do is we provide mobile and virtual prehistoric education and entertainment for a number of things like children's birthday parties, school classrooms, child cares, public events. We'll even go into a retirement home and help entertain the elderly. And we do these, we go to public events, all these kinds of events, and we also do virtual lessons. And we can do all these for classrooms and private homes. You can learn more about our virtual lessons at stompchomproar.com. Now, you all heard me. I am Dinosaur Ranger Anthony, the host of the Stomp Chomp Roar Show, and this is going to be for our YouTube channel. But let me introduce you to a few of my prehistoric pals. First, all the way from the Devonian period, some 370 million years ago, this armored fish could grow up to 30 feet or 10 meters long. Ours isn't that big, but she still likes to try and nibble on my fingers. And it's Devona, the Dunkelosteus. So here's Devona in her fishbowl. She likes to swim around, but we keep her plenty fed. So she's never nibbling on my fingers, you guys. I got all my fingers still. I got all 11. I mean, 10. So that is Devona, our Dunkelosteus. And she sits back there in our fishbowl. Next. We have a flying reptile from the Cretaceous period, some 89 million years ago. This pterosaur had a wingspan of up to 20 feet or six meters long. She has no teeth, even though we see a lot of uh, the toys of her have teeth. She had no teeth, but she had a large crust above her head. And it's Screech, our Pteranodon, you guys, in our birdcage back here. That is Screech, the Pteranodon. No, not a pterodactyl. There's no pterodactyls here in our book. Now, lastly, we have the largest known carnivore dinosaur of the Mesozoic era. This reptile-like creature had a sail up to five to six feet or almost two meters on its back. It also had a crocodilian-like snout, a lot thinner than the T-Rex snout. And it is, did you guess it? It's Paleo, our Spinosaurus. So you guys, this is Paleo, our Spinosaurus, and she likes to come with some of our uh, in-person events uh, when we travel in Omaha, Nebraska, and the surrounding states. So this is Paleo. Uh, she likes to nibble on fish. She would have lived during the Cretaceous period, uh, but she would have lived in what is now Northern Africa. So they dig up her fossils up in uh, Egypt and Morocco and around there. And she's quite a beauty, you guys. She has this big sail on her back, like I said. Scientists think that maybe it helped them swim. Uh, they could have been different colors to tell each other apart or maybe even attract a mate. So that is Paleo, our baby Spinosaurus, you guys. So those are our three prehistoric pals that we'll have on our Stomp Chomp Roar show. We we'll even have this toucan right here. She helps sit on my microphone and keeps me entertained. Now, you guys, before we jump right into episodes all about Paleozoic creatures, like Devona back there, or maybe Mesozoic reptiles, like dinosaurs, like our T-Rex, we first need to talk about geological time. Hmm, it's a quarter after one. Not that kind of time. We need to talk about ge geological time. But what is geological time, and what does it mean to be prehistoric? Hmm. I think we need to jump into our time machines and go all the way back. Let's go all the way back 4.6 billion years ago. That is, in fact, when the Earth began. 4.6 billion years ago, the Earth was just starting to be created. Now, how do we track that? Now, just like a book is broken up into chapters, pages, and paragraphs, so is time. And we have eons, eras, periods, and epochs. And we live in the Phanerozoic Eon, and it consists of three time periods. We have the Paleozoic Era, the Mesozoic Era, and the Cenozoic Era. But what are those eras? And let me explain them a little deeper. The Paleozoic Era means past life. That was 542 to 240. 
52 million years ago. And it has a lot of the sea creatures that we don't see around today, kind of like our ammonite right here or our Dunkleosius back there. We see a lot of sea creatures and those would have been swimming around Pangaea when all the continents were connected as one. Now the Mesozoic era, that means middle life. And it's some 252 to 65, 66 million years ago. And that's when we see all our reptiles, our dinosaurs, roaming the planet and they would have lived still on Pangaea but at this time Pangaea was starting to break up into the seven continents we know today. Now that era ends with the asteroid that eliminated the dinosaurs but it opened up the planet for mammals like us. That takes us into the Cenozoic era and that means present life and it's 65 million years ago up to today. Now, something interesting about human history is if you guys were to take a book, and this book had all 4.6 billion years old that the earth has been here, and you wanted to research about humans, you guys would have to go to the last page. And what, the last page, really? You'd have to go to the last page to the last paragraph, the last sentence, and even to the last word. We're in the index here. The last word in the book would be all about humans. The other pages, all the other words, chapters, paragraphs would be the other 4.6 billion years that the earth has been here. That is just mind-blowingly crazy. Now, scientists can look into the Earth's past by studying the layers in rocks. The layers are called strata and are common in sedimentary rocks. Scientists have given names of each rock layer throughout time. Now, for example, the first flowering plants, those were during the late Cretaceous period. And when we want to find dinosaur fossils, we go to the Mesozoic era. Now, Dunkleosius or uh, Dimetrodon, we go to the Paleozoic era. So, and even like mammoths, we go to the Pleistocene to find like woolly mammoths that we, see, that we see in the fossil record. Now, fossils in the rock layers tell paleontologists when something lived and in what time period that they might be digging in, kind of like with this brush here. But sometimes the movement of the Earth's tectonic plates or erosion can move these layers around or even clear them away forever. And for example, erosion, that is the movement of soil, dirt, sand. That is the movement of that by wind or water. So for instance, in my home state of Nebraska, there is no dinosaur evidence or fossils from the Triassic and the Jurassic period. And that is because erosion erased that time away from the soil on Nebraska. So we aren't able to find any dinosaur fossils uh, during those two time periods. Now, paleontologists can also use geological maps to help determine the rock layers that they're digging in so that they can make sure to find the exact rock layer they're looking for to be able to find, hopefully find a fossil that they're looking for in that area. Now, geological time is the time that is tracked by reading the rock layers or the strata in the rocks. Now, as far as prehistoric time goes, that's all the time before humans really started keeping written records of our lives. So this can be 4.6 billion years ago up to roughly around 2.5 million years ago when we first started seeing, you know, evidence of human life, you know, maybe cave paintings or instruments made out of woolly mammoth tusks, uh, any kind of fossil evidence, anything like that, when we first started finding evidence that humans lived on our earth. Now, these early time periods within the last 2.5 million years, they're called the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age. And the names for these ages are because those are the materials of some of the, the tools that we found during, these time, during this time. Uh, so those are the tools that the humans were making. So they could have making tools out of stone or tools out of bronze or tools out of iron. So those ages are named after those materials. And that is a quick overview of geological time and prehistoric time. Now, I hope to see you all back for our second episode. We're going to start going more into maybe some Paleozoic era creatures like Devona, or maybe even the Dimetrodon. That's right, the, the Dimetrodon isn't even a dinosaur. He lived before the Mesozoic era. So he's no dinosaur, but 
we are going to have some great episodes for you guys. I'm excited to start our YouTube channel, our Stomp Chomp Roar show, hosted by me, Dinosaur Ranger Anthony. A few of my prehistoric pals will join us on the journey on our YouTube channel. So thank you guys, everyone, for studying in and listening. We will see you again next time and not geological time.